I'm going to take you back 15 years ago. Uh, 15 years ago, I was in Boston. And I just started my fellowship in pediatric pathology, the first year of what was going to be three long, difficult, hard years for me, which made me what I am today. Uh, 15 years ago, when we were in Boston, my first and only child then, Drew, was a one-year-old baby. And I spent so much time at Boston Children's and the other hospitals there that I got home really late and I left really early. And I lived 36 miles away, so it was not very easy. One night I came home, my wife told me, you know what, this, this evening I'd taken my son, Drew, uh, out somewhere and some stranger saw her holding him. He was only a year old. And the stranger says, wow, you look so good together. That's your whole life right there in your arms. And she felt so good about that. And she told me that when I came home that night. Shortly thereafter, Drew was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, this is a lethal illness, no treatment, and very little hope. It shattered us. And you know now, life can never be normal again. Uh, but that's what happens in life. So we create a new normal for ourselves. And we started to live one day at a time. And Dhruv just continued to be a great kid, doing great at school, loves to play video games, do all the things little boys do. At that time, I thought to myself, you know, I almost quit my pediatric pathology fellowship. I was so devastated, I almost quit. But I hung in there. I didn't, I, I didn't know how I was going to survive the next couple of years with this news, because I knew what was going to happen in the end. My Angelo said, you don't just survive, you thrive. She said, my mission in life is not only to survive, but to thrive. I want to live with some passion, with some compassion, with some humor, and with some style. And I love that. And that is, things like that kept me going. And when Drew was nine years old, we welcomed in style our second baby, Rishi. Now, when Rishi was born, I was 42 years old. My wife was probably 20. We've been married 20 years. She still says she's, she's, she's 20. <laughs> no. OK, because of advanced paternal age, they said, you're a wrinkled old man. We need to test this kid for every single thing, all the genetic disorders. They tested him. Whatever the insurance would pay, they tested him. And Rishi was fine. He was great. He didn't have anything going on. And so this is another normal. And we were getting used to this. And we were happy with this normal. I really liked it. This was my first Father's Day with Rishi and with Drew together, all three of us. And I was so proud. You can see me. I'm holding them really tight. And Rishi had this beautiful long hair. Uh, it was three days after my birthday in 2010. September 10th, that we were all out at the Tuttle Mall in Macy's. And this lady who was working at Macy's was walking by us. She stopped. She came back. And she said, what a cute baby. He's so beautiful. He's so handsome. She thought it was a girl, but she said, he was so beautiful. She said, no, he's a boy. Oh, he's so handsome. And look at that long hair. I said, no kidding. He's taken after his dad. <laughs> that same evening, Rishi fell sick. And my wife said, something's wrong. Something's not right. I said, it's just a virus. Don't worry about it. I'm a doctor. I know everything. <laughs> and then she said, no, no, no. I want to take him to the urgent care. So we took him to the urgent care in Dublin. They ran some blood tests. And they put him on an ambulance and sent him here. Rishi was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia that day. And now, you know, I'm, I'm angry all over again. I'm super mad. I'm very sad. I'm upset. This is something you know, that you can never believe will happen to you. It always happens to somebody else. And I'm a health care giver. I'm a pediatric pathologist. Now, I don't see patients. I see their tissues. I see, read their biopsies. I look at their genetics and molecular changes, and I give those reports. So I'm a very important part of the team, but I don't see patients directly. But you know, how can these things affect us as health care givers? And that's what I'm here to tell you. Like, we had some really great speakers today. Uh, 
fabulous speakers. And what I'm trying to do is trying to take a, a little bit from them and tell you stories, because experiences make you change your behavior. I've had those, and I'm going to give you stories that will make you change your behavior. So we'll see how that goes in the next few minutes. But it was very difficult for us. But I will tell you that this hospital, and those of you who are visitors here who are not associated with this hospital, they were just fantastic. And I would not have had Rishik in any other place than here. There's a few pictures here with Rishi, uh, you know, just having fun. He was full of joy. He had five cycles of chemotherapy, 100 units of blood products, 10 visits to the operating room. We didn't have that app then. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is a new normal, and we just got used to it. It's OK. This is life. It's a new normal. And what happened was, before he reached his 16th month birthday, Rishi passed away. So we lost Rishi. And, you know, again, we're all really upset. I had so many negative emotions in me. People would be happy when they listen to Donald Trump. <laughs> but I thought to myself, listen, I'm going to take all these negative emotions that I have and use it as fuel, burn this negative emotion, and push me from point A to point B in my job. Why don't I do something about this? So we, we, we donate money to the Muscular Dystrophy Association to Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy to honor our child group who has muscular dystrophy. We started all these walks, run for your sons, run for your grandsons, you know, all these things. We participated. We raised money. We also started with the, you know, just the great folks in this hospital we started the Rishik Prasad Endowment Fund here, which a lot of great folks like yourselves contributed to, that helps patients in need. And that money continues to grow. But I am reminded of what Khalil Gibran, the great Lebanese-American poet and writer, said. He said, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. And so I decided to use my experiences to do something to myself, to change my behavior. Innovation is not innovation unless it changes behavior. And I wanted to change my behavior because I was full of these terrible negative emotions. You know, I was so angry with this world. But I wanted to change that into something positive. So Rishik passed away before his 16th month birthday. Now we are back to a different kind of new normal, which we accepted. And we all are like bubbles. We're here one moment, gone the next, sometimes leaving back some memories, sometimes not. Um, but what can we do from our personal experiences to enhance patient care? And this is what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about my boys. It's about what I can do for patients here. So I have developed three rules. They are called Rishi's rules. The first rule is that I will consider every single child or patient or case that I see as my own child. And you are all like, what is he talking about? This guy doesn't even see patients. He's a pathologist. <laughs> hey, listen, for me, every slide, every blood sample, every piece of tissue is connected to a patient. A patient who is a child, a patient who has family, a patient whose family and the patient count on us to get them to feel better. So yes, I do consider every patient my child. And my fellows and my residents and the junior faculty that I mentor in pathology will tell you that when they bring to me a report that they've written up or when it's finalized and it's not complete or it doesn't seem right, I ask them, what would you do if this report was your baby's or your child's report? Read it. How would you like it to be? Bring it back to me, then we'll work it together. So every child is my child. When I get a bone tumor and I'm looking at that, that is somebody else's droop, that is somebody else's rishi. And I tell my trainees to do the same. My second rule is that I spiritually connect with every child, but I detach myself. 
from the outcome of the treatment. That is not what I am here to worry about, think about, or surmise. I will do the best that I can. I will be mindful in that moment. I will give all attention to that case. It is my intention to spiritually connect. Yeah, this guy's been eating a lot of Indian spicy food, chicken vindaloo. What's he talking about? He doesn't even see patients. He's a pathologist. <laughs> so we have electronic medical records now, and we have EPIC. So I always look into the medical records of every case I sign out. Now we have their little photos that pop up. So I look at their photo. I make a connection there. Some of you may believe in a superior power or God. Some of you may not, and that's OK. This is life, like I said, you know, it's all, everything's okay. But those of you who do believe can make a spiritual connection with somebody you've never met before. Why can't you do that with your patients, even if you are a pathologist, right? So I do that, and I detach myself from what is going to happen with that, with that child's therapy. Now, Rishi's rule number three is that I will cherish every single patient as an opportunity as a door that is not open yet, that I will open to find something really awesome, something beautiful, something that will grow me and that will help me grow other people. Like one of our wonderful speakers earlier today said, mentoring, it's not only what I learn, but what can I show somebody else? How can I show the ropes to somebody else? So this concept of cherishing every patient, it, just imagine, many of us, many times at home, when all the lights are off and there's somebody, a spouse, a child working in a room with the door shut, but they're working in that room. The rest of the house, the lights are off. You can see a little bit of light under that door. You go in there, open the door for some reason, all that light comes out and envelops you and everything else that's outside that door. Why don't you imagine that every single patient case or even encounter with a patient or his family or her family would teach you something, something that you hadn't learned before, something that you can take and teach your other younger faculty, your, your residents. And you don't have to be a physician. You could be the person that transports the child into the OR. You could be the one that's in housekeeping. You could be the one, you could be a nurse practitioner. You could be the chairman of a department here. You could be the chief of a division in surgery. It doesn't matter. We can all use these three rules. Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you do not take. If you miss a child, you miss that opportunity to learn from that child. So these are my three rules that I have put into place after my experiences. And we can all learn something, not only from a child, but from, it, from its reports, from previous doctors and teams that have taught us through their reporting when the child comes here from a different place. We can always learn something new. And we need to keep our minds open to that. I just wanted to update you that last fall, on his birthday, Drew got a call. He didn't, his mom did from Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. And they said, would you like to come and make a trip over here? So who are you and why are you calling us? Well, your son is on a national database for kids with muscular dystrophy. We want to be starting some new tribe. We want to see if you'd be interested. So they went, mom and son, six hours back and forth, made a couple more trips. They looked at his heart, his lungs, everything. They put a central line. So now. He goes with his mom every week, they drive to Chicago, stay overnight, get infusions, drive back, and he's back to his homework and back to his school. This is our new normal. Tomorrow they leave again for the 34th trip, one trip every week. And they will continue to do that for the next two and a half years. In the meantime, I am so proud of those people there as well the people who look at Dhruv as their own child, as their own Pete, or as their own Frank, and people who connect with him spiritually there, not worrying about where this trial is going to go, but just being in the moment, at 
having that intention to be mindful and knowing that they, they, they look at Dhruv as a door and an opportunity to learn some more. These are things we can all do. This is not about me. This is not about my boys. This is about all of us. Every day I come to work, I ask myself, can I consider every child as my own today? Can I spiritually connect with every case today? And can I use every case and every opportunity in these children to be better and to teach somebody else something? And I think we can get to better health care that way. And I ask you if you all could do that. And I end with this. It's a great, great, powerful quote from Mark Twain. The most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why? Thank you.